grave on the grounds of the state mental hospital. No shit. They're ready to be done with her crazy ass. Now, over the years, of course, a lot of articles, stories have been written about Lizzie Halliday. And some feminist writers have speculated that Lizzie's crimes were considered to be much more heinous than other female killers at that time because she was not considered beautiful or pretty. Well, you know, uh, there is actually some statistical evidence that people who are attractive, male and female, come out, have better um, better outcomes in court, even at the smallest level, like trafficking, stuff like that. Yeah. Isn't that funny? It is. But since she was considered ugly, I mean, at this time, there were plenty of other women who were murdering people. I mean, not long after this, you had Lizzie Borden, which we talked about on our last Tipsy February episode. Yeah, and it kind of went different for her, didn't it? It did. I mean, she was found not guilty, acquitted of the murders. But let's it's be an honest. Interesting Lizzie was perspective. pretty damn out of control. But to be called the worst woman in the world? Yeah. I mean, we had Belle Gunness. There were a lot of other women who were doing equally as terrible things. That's true. But for some reason, they ran with the Lizzie Halliday story. She was naturally ugly. Naturally ugly. Isn't that a strange way to describe someone? Well, I've seen some naturally ugly people. Can you, I feel is, bad for them. I'm just like, can I pluck your eyebrows and contour your face? Please let me. Can you, Is there pictures of her? Um, There's like some draw, some drawings. Basically like drawings. Draw, yeah, there aren't really a whole lot of pictures. So like I mean, I guess at this drawing. time she was not wealthy, and you know, so it was hard to right maintain and get a photo. Not like today, where everybody has an iPhone. The sources I used for the story is a book called *The Lady Killers*, and of course, various newspapers and magazines, mostly out of New York State. Wow. Yeah. It's a crazy story. Well, I think it's an interesting story. I love the old cases. 1800s, those are cases, unless it's a big story, like perhaps Lizzie Borden, you don't hear a lot about those murders that took right. place 150, 200 years ago. But I think they're so fascinating because I think it just goes to show that even though in modern times we act like we're just living in this horrible world of murder and mayhem, but the truth is this has been going on since the dawn of time. We just are now hearing about it because we have the 24-hour news cycle. Well, there's that. And uh, a lot of these uh, people back in these this time did, got away with a lot more. They did. Killed a lot more people. They would just up and move to another area. Things weren't connected. And I think that in a lot of ways, um, they were more vicious and were able to do more you know, harm to society because of things not being connected and moving at such a slow pace. Well, yeah, that definitely makes sense. And then, of course, Lizzie was married, like, what, seven, eight times? I mean, she just kept getting married. That's crazy. Which is funny, because I'm like, I have so many single friends, men and women, who complain about not being able to even get a, like, second date. Yeah. And I'm like, but here Lizzie Halliday is, a yeah. maniac. A maniac who's not pretty. And she can win, like, eight husbands. I'm telling you, she has some skills that are not described in this story. <laughs> you think so? She must have, <laughs> right? Soft hand, something? She could make a really delicious baked potato. Well, yeah. Let's just, yeah, let's call it that. The uh, Urban Dictionary baked potato. Oh. Oh. Okay. I don't know what that is. Don't look that up. Well, Dylan, I hope that you're feeling better. Oh, I will be after I get done with this damn night of work. Thanks for sitting down and, and taking the time to record a brand new Mountain Murders episode for all of our listeners. Yes, and I want to apologize to listeners. I'm a little flat, and I don't think through editing you can make me better. Well, it's okay. I'm sorry. We will, we love you, and we'll forgive you this time. I, I love you, and I love them, okay. each and every one of them, <laughs> men and women. And um, we're really glad that they keep tuning in. It's true. Thanks so much. And, of course, if you haven't quite caught up, we did released three episodes last week. We had our Eric Rudolph mountain terrorist episode. We had two unsolved cases out of West Virginia, Ooh. the murders of Teresa Woods and Kathy Carroll. Those were interesting. Which was originally a Patreon episode, but we released that for our listeners. And then we had our Tipsy February, which was also a Patreon episode. And we talked about the first documented murder, Lizzie Borden and the Black Dahlia, straight a little bit from our usual content. 
But I also want you guys to see a bit of what we do on Patreon and what's yeah. available. So if you decide to sign up, you know you're getting some interesting content there. Yes, talking about the caveman killing people, y'all. It's true. Okay. Well, we'll be back with more mountain murders and true crime soon enough.